Alrighty, hello. Thank you for stopping by, folks. My name is Julian Kemmerer, and I'm talking about Pipeline C. Easier hardware description between RTL and HLS. Um, I'm moving pretty quickly here today because I'm trying to fit this into seven minutes, so I encourage you to pause if you can and read details and slides I'm skipping over, or even check out the paper that was published with the workshop. And uh, with that, thank you, Latte, for hosting me. So here is where I would rant a little about my motivation for using C for RTL skip over that um, and get right into semantics. So we're writing C and we're getting hardware description out the other side. It makes sense to start with the top level interface of the design. Function arguments are input ports and function return values are output ports. And so by specifying a function with this pragma main megahertz, this means the function is main, it's at the top level, and it exposes its ports on the final top module. And uh, each main function exists in a single clock domain and so you can see there's two different clocks here used, 100 and 200 megahertz and um, you can also see the input and output ports based on the function uh, here in the VHDL. Moving on here, I'm going to skip over this slide and really give it a sense of the data flow semantics here. Each time you use a function it's a new instance of the module. The wiring of the module depends on the C code. And so on the top here you can see two foo module instances. They have independent input data and so they're wired up in parallel there, but their results come together for the single bar module. Um, and in the bottom image there is a loop which, uh, like combinatorial logic in traditional hardware description languages, gets unrolled and so you get three instances of the foo module and in this case it's uh, output feeding back to its input three times. In addition to just doing combinatorial logic, we can get registers into the mix here and truly be doing register transfer language here again. So um, if you have a look here, you have a my counter module that has a static local variable, and that infers registers for state. Um, again, the data flow is derived from the C code, how the variables are used and assigned. Um, and so you have complete control over how and when registers are used. Um, here is where I would spend some time emphasizing that this isn't real software C code. We're going to skip over that. And of course, all this uh, fully synthesizable uh, HDL that comes out of the tool is compatible with all simulators, and the tool will help you even start up some of them. Um, all right, getting into some more advanced features here, truly specific to uh, Pipeline C. Uh, first being timing feedback. So if you're going to give software developers the ability to take some C code and get hardware out of the other side, uh, they're going to do some pretty wild things. And so to keep them in check, uh, the tool provides timing feedback, which will let them see things like, for example, here, this accumulation addition of adding two 8-bit numbers together has a significantly lower delay and higher operating frequency than uh, the huge delay of operate, uh, adding two floating point numbers together, which uh, ends up in a lower frequency there. Um, and this works with a range of manufacturer synthesis place around tools as well as the, uh, the great open source CAD suite flow. All right, <clears throat> uh, now onto the feature that Pipeline C was created for, automatic pipelining, uh, meaning that sections of combinatorial logic can be automatically pipelined to an initialization interval of one at uh, arbitrary fbex targets. And uh, well, not completely arbitrary, it's you know anything the device can actually get to, and it's that device specific timing feedback from the last slide which the tools will internally use to do all its pipeline and uh, all of this still composes with function call syntax just like uh, combinatorial logic did earlier um, here are some more details about um, how RTL and pipelines and data flow semantics all work out in the code but skip over that um, Moving on to another big feature, I've been talking about things inside of modules, inside of functions, but there's a, a global namespace and there are global variables. And so I only have time today to show this one example where a global variable is written once and read many times. So uh, what do we have here? There's a global variable. It's called sync recent wire. It's a single bit. And we have a top level function that has a, an input port that's a button. And you could be doing anything inside this function here, synchronizing and debouncing the button. But critically, just from in this function, driving the synchronous reset wire variable. And then from any other function in any other place in the hierarchy, any number of times you can um, 
read that wire and uh, use it like you would uh, a reset in this case. And so that saves you the hassle of needing to um, hierarchically route down the wire into every single module instance where it's used and uh, offer some interesting composability options. Uh, so since uh, these global variables can be used in multiple functions and functions can be did in different clock domains, you end up actually being able to do clock domain crossings this way and um, the tool generates helper functions, but I mostly have to skip over this slide. Um, uh, right. uh, final feature to discuss here is a relatively new one, an experimental one for Pipeline C. It's something I first saw in a hardware description language called Scilus. It has a uh, clock step operator that it can uh, use to derive state machines. And so I implemented something similar for pipe sign, Pipeline C. You can see the uh, green underscore underscore clock function here and how it's used. Uh, essentially, you can take combinatorial logic that we've been talking about up until this point and um, separate it out when it occurs sequentially deriving a state machine and uh, it's deriving when what variables are registers based on that and so um, uh, it's pretty neat and what, what's really neat is when you have multiple instances of state machines, multiple um, threads if you will, all going uh, at once and how they interact but yeah, you'll have to check out the paper for that. Uh, Alright, on to a live ray tracing demo. Uh, I'm just kidding. We don't have time for that actually in just seven minutes so uh, I'm not going to leave you hanging though. If you check out on the internet, there are places where Sphere versus Shapes has been talked about before, which is the game that was created by my uh, collaborator Victor here, and uh, even got a great write-up by the Yosis HQ blog, and uh, I'll have links at the end that you can check out. Um, but what I do have time to tell you about is um, the, quickly about the top level of that Ray Trace game design. So there's two primary global variables, the game state, and then also there's a clock that gets fed back, um, and there's two top level main functions in these in two clock domains. Um, one's rendering pixels in a long pix automatic pixel rendering pipeline and the other one is doing uh, gameplay and animation logic. Uh, right, and moving on here. Finally, some future work. Um, lots of room to improve the auto pipelining iterations and how it reports and optimizes things. It would be great to get uh, knowledge of area and resources into this because it's only timing focused right now. Adding stall and feedback signals would be great. It's an interesting syntax problem. Um, then there's lots of improvements to the new uh, derived finite state machines, which is actually another layer of Pipeline C code generation. Uh, overall, you know, being C-based, benefit from C++-like things like templates and uh, template types, uh, parameterization and extra compile time stuff that's nice. Uh, there's a lot of preprocessor ugly stuff that's happening now. Simulation-wise, it would be great to just you know throw all of the pipeline C code at a C compiler and somehow just run it as a ultra-fast simulation. Um, currently, you can only do that with parts. Uh, finally, you know, all of this would probably be easier if I moved on to a modern hardware <laughs> compiler framework like um, MIR and the Circuit Project. Um, if anybody works with those and wants to help integrate with pipeline C, uh, I would really appreciate it and uh, feel free to reach out. And so uh, with that, uh, I leave you with the links and uh, thank you for your time. Feel free to reach out.